So we're here at the Lenara Connect, and uh, who are you? Um, hi, my name is Michael Welling. I am the founder, owner, operator of Hordy Embedded Design. Just so Hordy Embedded Design, this is your company? Yes. What, what do you do? I do contractual design engineering, uh, board support for various ARM and um, other processor architectures. So you have uh, all these, uh, you, you do PCB design, um, all kinds of custom special PCB design projects, right? Yes, I do. I, I actually do a lot of contractual PCB design, but the boards that I'm going to show off today are actually open hardware. So um, right here, for example, um, open hardware, that means those are for projects that are kind of like open source community stuff that has to do with Lenaro? Well, none of these, well, the ones that are directly related to Lenaro are the 96 boards uh, mezzanine cards. So this guy here is a Nile mezzanine that was developed by uh, one of the students uh, from Brazil uh, that we're working together with. Yeah. Uh, I hand assembled this guy at home to prove out an Altium template that we created. So the bottom side is the important side actually. Um, the pin layout and uh, connector spacing was verified with this board. And now that template is ready for other people to use to create new designs uh, from the Altium template. And we have a KiCad template, and we're working on getting a Eagle template as well. So, uh, what is special about this backside here? Are there some uh, things that are rooted around? Well, the, the connector spacing is important for the 96 boards uh, specification. So, uh, the 96 boards CE spec. It requires the, the high speed connector here and the low speed connector here to have a, a certain spacing and we just needed to verify that essentially. This board otherwise is pretty uninteresting. It has a few LEDs and switches essentially. All right. What kind of other projects are you working on here? Well, we have here, this one is the, uh, it's quite an old board actually. I, I created this in 2015 when 96 boards was uh, early on. And this is a robotics controller that is based on the, the same specification as the other board. Robo Mezzi. Yes. What is that? Mezzanine. Yes, it's, it plugs into the, the Dragon board and um, yeah. the, the it plugs, in. it plugs into the top of the, the uh, 96 board CE spec compliant boards. So 960, all the new boards. And then it has all these uh, connectors for robotics kind yes. of usage? Actually, these th along the edges, um, there are servo headers and GPIO headers. This board uh, needs to be revised, actually, because these, these headers actually contend with connectors that are below. So I'm probably going to uh, eventually do a revision of this board that is a little, uh, little more conducive to the spec. Now, it just has a, there's a 9 DOF IMU in the middle here, that little tiny chip. Uh, we have here is it, is what we're using to drive the con, uh, the servos. So this is a PWM controller, and these guys over here are just level translators for I squared C and GPIO, which come out to headers here. So the the, the thing with uh, 96 boards is it's 1.8 volt um, I/O. So a lot of the hobbyist and off-the-shelf stuff runs on 5 or 3.3, so you typically have to level translate to talk to them. So, and, so uh, where are you based? I'm actually based out of Carbondale, Illinois, currently. Um, not is, really well known, but... Is it's, it near Chicago? It's actually on the opposite side of the state from Chicago, but, you know, everything in Illinois is close to Chicago, according to most... So it's, uh, it's close to the next state. What's the next state below there? Um, the... You got Missouri, which is actually, we're close to St. Louis, and, you know, Kentucky and Tennessee. So uh, you, you're able to, yeah. uh, to just design all these PCBs. How do you do that? I use, uh, most of my design is actually done, all the open hardware design is done in KiCad. So um, I use... Um, do, you have, do you have it running on your laptop? I do have KiCad running on my laptop. So, KiCad is an open source uh, platform for designing printed circuit boards, and it has recently uh, added a lot of support for um, newer features that, that are, are important for higher speed design. 
but this it's been around for a while and it let's look at the beagle logic uh this is actually a project that someone else did but i, I helped do it uh, a designer game for it. so do you kind of like load it yep and there oh this is an unrouted version so this is a, this is actually an early version of the board but that's not a design I've actually done. This is another open hardware project that I was doing design review for. So you design the stuff like this? Yes. Well, at first you start with a schematic and you capture the 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 um, components in schematic form. Oh, uh, well, this project isn't great for demonstrating. Let's see if I get another one. Okay, there it is. Yeah. So you have schematics, and then from the schematics. The, uh, the wiring for each of the you know the different components yep. is, is laid out all the passives and ICs and everything's in there yeah and then you, can you come a little bit closer to the screen so I can hear I just no I'll sit a little bit closer yeah okay so the the um, components are are wired in in schematic form Ooh. in schematic form and then from there you take that and you import it into into the PCB and this is just a kind of a graphical representation of how they're going to be interconnected. And then on the PCB, it's actually what it's physically going to look like when it's done. And uh, you place the components on the board and you route the traces between the, the components based on the schematic. And you see this is actually partially routed. Uh, but this is, this is uh, just a, an earlier version of a, of a board that's actually coming out from an, another engineer that I um, did the review for. Yeah. So uh, so you do the, the design in, in that uh, application and then you get it printed by somebody or somebody makes it, right? Where, right. Where do you get that done? Um, actually, a lot of these boards, you see how they're all um, purple. Uh, this, and we have some, a lot of, the majority of boards are green actually, and green is actually the easiest solder mask, which is the color of the board to apply. but. The purple, the purple boards are actually from OSH Park, which they actually sponsor uh, my open hardware designs. So they actually provide the boards for free for me so that I can continue to support the open hardware community with my boards. Cool. Yeah. And you have uh, something running here with the RISC-V. And you're doing something special with the RISC-V. What are you doing right here with this? This is the uh, low five board, you know actually. This? Yeah, sure, yeah. I can hold it. The Low 5 is a, a, a RISC V microcontroller, the f one of the f first of its kind. Um, first open hardware silicon, I guess they call it. And um, this board pretty much takes another uh, reference design and, and strips back some of the ec extra components and br uh, breaks it out into a bread breadboard friendly uh, form factor. So you have a, a serial flash, uh, the, the uh, microcontroller here, that little guy, uh, and a reset button, and then you know uh, some a few passives, and uh, the crystal oscillator or the crystal is over here. The little guy. It's hard to point to them because they're so small. This board actually plugs into a, a, a standard breadboard. And this is the Risk Five. Which Risk Five is there? Um, well, this is FE three ten, which is the the microcontroller spec. Um, there's a higher end FE 500 series, I, I believe. And I'm actually going to uh, visit the Sci-5 um, headquarters tomorrow to talk to the guys about their different products and uh, work with them possibly in the future. We'll see. And uh, you have a crowdfunding going on with this, right? Yes, I do. Actually, the, um, the low five is on, let's see if I can get it up here, is on group gets. Nope. Group gets. So I, I, I made them available to the to the general public. Twenty five dollars. Yes. Yes. That's it. Yep. And there's uh, one hundred ninety two percent funded. You you needed the. Uh... We did a, a minimum of a hundred boards, and we got one hundred ninety two on order. Nice. And it's still people it's can still order going. more. Yes, yeah, so we have eleven days left on that. And when are you gonna ship? After the eleven days is up. We have to have them assembled, and they should be out like in a month time frame, somewhere in there. And so uh, the people that are excited about this are the community around the Risk Five, right? Yeah, the uh, and the general open hardware community as well. All right, and uh, 
and, and these right here, this is using the new Octavo Systems um, SIP, right? Uh, yes. Is it what with the BeagleBoard, BeagleBone Blue is using, kind of? Yes, the BeagleBone Blue uses the SIP uh, system and package. Octavo Systems took yeah. the took the um, the uh, SLC from the BeagleBone Black, and then they added the the DDR and the power management IC, and they put it all inside of this one package, so that it makes it uh, a lot easier for new board designers to come up and and develop without having to worry about the the high speed layout of the DR and all the internal passives and, and what have you. So on, you'll notice that this board is actually single-sided, which is not typically possible with your standard SOC because you'll usually have a whole bunch of passives on the bottom. So they, they, they really free up the bottom side of the board and they make the, the routing a lot easier for the design engineer. So, and, so what yeah. do you do about this? Uh, what do you mean? What do you do with this kind of uh, chipset? Okay, so what projects do you have going? This particular uh, project was just kind of uh, it was kind of handed off for me or to me from uh, Jason Kreidner of the uh, BeagleBoard Org Foundation. He did an, the initial design in Eagle, and then I, I converted it to KiCad and fixed up some little design boo boos. And this kind of proved out that hey, we can make this this board run Linux. Yeah. And fit into a, 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 a small mint tin. It's a very small board. Smaller than the Raspberry Pi Zero, actually. So that, that was the precursor to what now just recently launched is the Pocket Beagle. And you, you actually, these are actually on for sale uh, last week, launching at uh, Maker Faire, New York. Pocket Beagle. Yeah, so they actually, Octavo went ahead and made the, the chip even smaller. For us, and this how much smaller is it? It's like half or something. It's uh, I think sixty percent. Right. Yeah. So this this chip has got all the same features as the bigger chip. Actually, it has a little bit more. Uh, it has an EEPROM embedded in as well. Yeah. So the the board actually also single single sided, very simple. The added the benefit with this board is that it breaks out a lot of I/O on these two headers that are out on the side here. I didn't actually do the design on this board. It was done by GHI, but I did do a KiCad conversion so that we have both KiCad and Eagle versions of the design yep. out on GitHub. So you can actually download the, the design files and make your own derivatives. Cool, that's awesome. So what are you gonna do in the future? And are you excited with Linaro? And all yeah. the potential of stuff? Uh, you you talking about mezzanine and all kinds of projects? Yes, actually, I'm I'm heading up a, a community mezzanine initiative so that we can actually develop more uh, mezzanine products for the 96 boards. Um, what I try to do is kind of enable people to, to get started pretty quickly. So um, I, I made a, uh, I augmented the KiCad template to add the uh, the high speed connector on the bottom, and this is actually all to, all based on the Altium template, but. What, what I'm working on now is a GPS uh, mezzanine, and in the future, we're gonna probably have an i squared s audio mezzanine. And we're trying to make it so that the, the boards are actually compliant with all of the 96 board CE spec, whereas with the, this particular board, um, this is from Arrow, are uh, designed by Seed, or uh, somebody from Qualcomm actually, but they're manufactured by Seed, but it uses features that are only on the Dragon Board 410C to do audio. So the audio mezzanine actually has a special header that connects to the baseboard, which other 96 board CE don't have. So I guess I should show you the header. So this is the header that's specific to the Dragon Board, and that allows audio to, to come out to the top and only works on the, on the uh, Dragon Board, actually. But the i squared s mezzanine coming up pretty soon will have the audio uh, driven with i squared s, which is part of the spec uh, that comes through the low speed header. Actually. And the, the stuff you're doing is uh, is uh, kind of like the big point about the 96 boards, the, the ecosystem that the idea is to have with the mezzanine boards and all that stuff. And you you're working in that direction. You're helping. Yeah, I'm you're trying helping that that the community. Yes, I'm trying to boost uh, the ecosystem a little bit. Um, there, there has been a, a fair amount of work um, 
a lot with uh, Arrow and other you know constituents to the project, but I'm trying to get more um, community members involved, and by providing the templates and reference designs, we can actually um, mix and match and make new designs a lot more quickly. And using uh, with the KiCad template, you can do it all with open source. So it's pretty cool.